obviously the EG game, we started off hot. So if there's one key difference is that we were on the opposite end of um, the hot start and we just couldn't recover quick enough. They were able to get away with the game. On the stat page, yeah, it looks like he's not getting value or playing well, but the kid is good and he's still finding his footing. Like he's new to BCT, he's new to playing at a tier one level against these top teams and he's only gonna get better. Hey guys, this is Pedro back with another interview covering BCT America Stage 1. I'm here accompanied by Val and the IGO of G2 who are coming off of a loss. 200 Thieves, uh, thus having the record at 1-1 one and one as of now, at the, as of the time of the recording. Valen, like I said before we started the recording, thank you so much for taking the time. And yep, nothing else to do right now but just cover this recent match against 100 Thieves, 100 Thieves squad that like were just coming into this without uh, uh, snatching a win in over, in, in around a year, but... Um, what were what what are your initial reactions? You know, what are your initial thoughts uh of how this series played out? Um, I mean it felt like we had a good prep leading into the match and we were really confident going into this. Um but like we just fell off from the jump. Like our team just felt different. People like the comms were a bit off. Today was just like an off day, I think, for us. And there's no excuse because at this level, you can't really afford to just have an off day, especially when every match matters so much. And we're in the alpha group, right? So every team is like 1-0 and right now. So it's, you know, it's an uphill battle for, for every match just to get into playoffs. Um, but yeah, I mean, we had some things happen before the match. Like, you know, some of us got uh, like food poisoning. And I'm not trying to make excuses, but I think it plays a bit of a factor onto why we felt off as a team and couldn't perform today. But to be honest, it's not an excuse and it's not it's not valid because I think regardless of the situation, when we step into the server, we have to be able to execute what we show in practice and we couldn't today. So yeah, I'm not I'm not too happy with the result, but it happens. Like I've I've had these losses before. I'm not too worried about it. But I wish we could have showed a, had a better showing today. Yeah, as you said, you know, sometimes you know things kind of fall south that kind of lets to a team not performing as well as they usually do. And yeah, you mentioned a little bit about, you know, the kind of issues that the team face, you know, ahead of this encounter, but you know, during the actual uh, series in those two maps, you know, what do you think Kind of was the, the, the biggest factors that kind of contributed to G2 just not playing well compared to how you guys fared against EG. I think it's honestly just based on the starts of the game. Like, I think when we start down, it's hard for people to get in their groove. Like, versus EG, we started up like 5 0, and even map two, we were up like 9 0. So it's pretty easy for people to get in the zone or get in flow state when you're up a lot, just because you feel more confident, you have room to work with, and so you're much more loose. But today's match was a lot closer, and rounds were bouncing back and forth. We started slow on bind, and I think it was hard for people to really like find their find their groove today. Um, I, I think for us, we just need to have a little bit more resiliency when it comes to us being down and understand like it's okay, and we're, we have adjustments. like land on what to do when we're losing so it kind of like eases the mind a little bit like you, you don't have to win every round but yeah when we're losing these rounds early it's just it feels like we're just going from the back foot like a lot yeah it, it, it does sort of feel like you know the team has to start off with that kind of advantage from the jump you know uh, uh in order for you guys to just maintain that form and just uh, uh close out a map to your favor and i, I, and I guess that, that kind of thus then uh, prove to be an obstacle once you know as you've been saying if you guys don't start off well then it's not going to fare well at the end of, of a map right yeah i mean that's honestly just my guess just because like you we were trying to compare like this match to eg and obviously the eg game we started off hot so if there's one key difference is that we were on the opposite end of um the hot start and we just couldn't recover quick enough. They were able to get away with the game. All right. And yeah, like uh, going a little bit back within the series into buying. Of course, you guys put in a, a new composition compared to, you know, the previous one. Last time you guys played in that map was like around during the offseason a few months ago. 
and I think it was Sentinels and Invitational. I might be wrong on that, but still, um, putting IC on the Euro and stuff like that. You know, I, I just want to know y- your thought process on to just adopting that composition, uh, dishing it out against Thunder Thieves, and you know, what were the 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 kind of um, difficulties or anything like that of that nature that you saw as the IGO. You know, given the fact that, of course, you know, the guys uh, ended up losing that one. Um, I mean, the comp we cooked up, like, is pretty good. And in practice, it was giving us good results. We've never been, like, an insane bind team. Like, our whole entire, like, core as a team. We've been pretty good, but not, like, insane at bind. So, like, results were mediocre in practice with it. But it felt like people were on insane rolls. And I see is very flexible on Duelist. So he's comfortable playing the Yoru. Like, it's not a hard pick for him. Um, yeah, I don't think our, like, our loss today or stuff like that came down to the composition or came down to comfort or anything. It really just was the overall picture of the team. Like, they they played better as a team today than us. We, we started, like, it felt like an uphill battle the whole time. We were just talking to each other, like, guys, like, um, like let's refocus here, you know, let's start like counting down, you know, like just the little micro comms we're missing. And that's something we, uh, we put a lot of emphasis on that. Like the small minute details, it's a game of percentage, like one, 2%. So if, if we're missing even one or two comms in a round, that's going to lean it in their favor. And that's how you lose a game. Like we could have had stronger first halves, like both first halves were pretty bad. Uh, split and bind. I think it was just because, like, like I said, the the micro comms, like the micro details, were just not hitting, and that's paints the overall picture like much worse. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would now want to take it take this conversation to a different topic, uh, not just focusing on this match, but more so look focusing on the team. Of course, you know when it comes to looking at G two, we're looking at, at a different version of the team. You know, compared to how it was in kickoff and the start of the year. You know, um, bringing in IC, um, parting ways with Net, and then moving Leaf to another role. Technically, another role because he's already used to playing Sentinel Sentinel agents uh, in the past. But yeah, like as someone who hands on in trying to formulate the team, building the team, leading the team by word, by other people that I've been interviewing within the team a meticulous manner. And you can talk about that in a second, but still. How do you compare this version, this G2 squad, compared to the, to, to the previous one? Um, It's hard to know exactly, like, key differences or if one's better than the other, like, the obvious answers. But uh, just like the differences between the team, <clears throat> I would say with Nate on Sentinel, he's like it kind of fits his play style a bit, and he's really comfortable. Like in practice, he's been playing great, and it kind of takes that pressure off him to play Duelist. And uh, when you have a superstar player like Leaf, it's kind of a double-edged sword to put him on a, a entry role like Duelist, where you're typically going in, getting your kill, and getting traded. Um, and so that's where Icy comes in, where he's like the explosive player. He understands our pacing really well. Um, so it was easy to slot him in. And he's just going in, trying to get his entry based on the utility. And from there, like, we let the, the rest of the team close out the rounds. Even Nate, like you saw today out in split, like he had a 1v2. Like, he's he's a closer. And Sentinel is a pretty good role to close out rounds or uh, and stuff like that. So it fits to him well. I mean, I know a lot of people are saying, why would you guys do this? He was a star duelist. Um, I know we can't show it right now, but it it has been working very well for us. Um, previous roster, I would say it was pretty similar. Like Net was a good closer; he was a good sentinel. Um, and Leaf was a good uh duelist as well. But just like some some things I I can't really touch on, just kind of fell off in the team. So they decided like to make a change, and yeah. Um, I want to focus a little bit on IC and just, of course, you know, he's a rookie within the, the VCT landscape, you know, playing in stage one and just fitting in with the team. Of course, he has, has been uh, um, performing, you know, on, on the statistics level of sites so far in these two weeks. But how have you seen, you know, his performance in, um, as a duelist and just uh, uh, trying to be the leader for entries and stuff like that for the team? 
in both matches. How have you seen this for him lately? Um, I mean, he does his job well, I think. Um, like that's my opinion, of course. Like I'm the, on the team, I'm IGL, and I I would say he does his job well. I, people bring up statistics to me all the time with with him, but like first first week versus EG was a dominant map too, and he had really low stats, so you can't even count that. He didn't even have opportunity to get kills. Like we were killing everybody. Um, and in map one of that series, if you actually watch it back, he had a great defensive half. We go into attack, and he had like a couple unlucky rounds, like. We walk out A. I bought to read the match. Like we walked out A, and Superman just peeks with an outlaw, and he's half armor, so he gets one shotted, or he gets eye scanned through a smoke and spammed, or he entry C and gets tripped. Like they're kind of unavoidable deaths, just playing the role. And so on the stat page, yeah, it looks like he's not getting value or playing well, but the kid is good, and he's still finding his footing. Like he's new to VCT, he's new to playing at a tier one level against these top teams, and he's only going to get better. Like I honestly, I have a lot of faith in him. And I, th- and I know the rest of the guys do as well. So he's a fast learner. I think with the, especially with the loss today, there's a lot to learn for him and for the team. And so I'm just excited to see how we come back for Super Week because I, I, I've been in this scene long enough to understand that you always come back harder from losses. You learn more as an individual from losses. And it's just about how you bounce back. So that's going to be the emphasis going into the prac week. Bounce back. Let's start in practice. Like, in practice, we've been playing well. So it's all about trying to translate into the match. And so I think we're going to have a big focus on just like the little things and nailing them down every day, every day, every day, little things. Um, So it's engraved in the play style because it's not yet. Some days we show it, some days we don't. Yeah, uh, fortunately, you guys weren't able to show it uh, for today, but hopefully, you know, you guys can bounce back for next week and Super Week, as you said. Um, Valen, I wish I could have talked to you more, but it's got a ping to wrap it up, so I'm going to do exactly that. Thank you so much for taking the time and doing this interview. I really appreciate it, and best of luck in Super Week. Yeah, thank you, Pedro.